You're listening to The South Stands, a Buckeye football podcast by Ohio State fans for Ohio State fans on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Welcome back to The South Stands, a Buckeye football podcast by Ohio State fans for Ohio State fans from the West Coast. I'm your host, Zach Moore. Today is Wednesday, September 21st, and I'm very happy to be joined once again by Paige Van Horn from Denver. PVH, how's it going, my friend? It's going well, buddy. How are you? Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Thanks for making the time tonight. We're also joined by fellow contributor Chad Plummer in Cleveland. CP, what's the word from the 216? 216 is all good, as always. Um, (laughs) Just chilling, just got home from the office and have a little Casamigos and looking forward to a nice little and uh, enjoying conversation with uh, Buckeye football with you clowns. All right, my man. All right. Sounds <laughs> sounds nice. Of course, <laughs> we're here to have a brief second look back at number three, Ohio State's 72 to 21 drubbing of the Toledo Rockets last Saturday because Paige and Chad have not yet had the opportunity to share their takeaways from that game with our listeners. And then, of course, we'll have a look at Ohio State's next matchup with the Wisconsin Badgers this coming Saturday night in the Horseshoe. PVH, I want to start with you. Now, you didn't think in the preview pod last week that Toledo would put up much resistance on Saturday night. You were right about that. I believe you said you expected Ohio State to throttle the Rockets. It's pretty much what happened. Your score prediction was 50 to 10, but did you have any inclination the game would get that out of hand? 72 points, 763 yards of total offense. What did you think? No, I mean, I mean, how? Yeah, seventy points is is ridiculous. And kind of like we were, what we were just talking about is, you know, how many points did they score with their second team? How many points did they score with their third team? <laughs> um, you know, you you put up that many points, and you know he's going to pull those guys. So the fact that they just kept rolling uh, mm-hmm. was was astonishing. I think you know I, I didn't I didn't buy you know Toledo. And all those stats simply because I mean, <laughs> who did they Long Island State or something? Yeah, it's like, come on, right. that, like that cannot, that that can't be indicative of anything. Um, so <laughs> I, you know, I expected them to, you know, to win, but clearly not by that much. And um, yeah, I think we can get into more details about the game, but yeah, I didn't see. Although, you know, I think you could say, hey, man, the the offense, you know, finally got rolling. I think we, you know, you know, maybe. Not to that level, but that's the offense that we thought we would see against Notre Dame that we didn't see. So that was super encouraging. Yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? What what did you see from the offense and maybe spend a little time on the defense too that really stood out to you? I, you know, the big thing for me is like, I think, and you kind of touched on it. It's like, I think it's time that we have to take Cade Stover as a legitimate offensive threat for this team. And like, whoever saw that coming, um, (laughs) I agree. That guy's astonishing, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, pretty cool. He was great. Just, uh, uh, let me go through his line real quick. Uh, Again, Cade Stover, three receptions, 83 yards, uh, didn't score a touchdown, but man, he, he I mean, he caught two long passes down the field, one right down the seam and a beautiful throw by CJ Stroud. So to your point, PBH, yeah, he looks like a real weapon at yeah. tight end. He is a weapon, right? Like, I don't think it's just, a, you know, like a, a fluke or just, you know, um, and, and what's weird, right, is like we kind of always wanted to see it from record and it just never happens, um, you know, and I don't know why, but for whatever reason, CJ's looking for that guy and he's got great hands. He can catch the ball. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't watch it closely enough to, you know, okay. He, you know, he pancakes guys and, you know, run blocking and stuff, but apparently he does that really well too. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just a comedy of weapons that they have. And I just don't know how you even remotely game plan to try and stop them. Um, because literally, yeah, I mean, with Fleming back, Smith and Jigba back, you know, Harrison's taking it to the next, next level. Um, you throw Stover in there, like, okay, what do you do? Like, what do you legitimately do to try and stop them? What do you try and take away from them? And so th- that was the, you know, in the first half, I was just laughing at the whole Cade Stover thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you're always the one to point out the tight end. This is the game. They're going to get the tight end involved. And yeah, he was a pleasant surprise. And I'm, I'm actually looking at the the PFF grades from that game. And not only did he contribute what he did offensively as a pass catcher, but he graded out really well 
as a as a blocker in that game. Uh, his overall grade was seventy seven point five, but he got a a grade of seventy nine point eight for pass blocking uh, in, in that game. So, pardon me, actually, it was a, a solid seventy, but still, I mean, like really, really good. Um, you know, so that's primarily what they ask a tight ends at Ohio State, right? Is you're a blocker first, yeah. and then we'll throw you a bone here and there as a as a pass here catcher, but. But right. yeah, and all those guys go on to play in the NFL, right? You That's know, true. Like, oh, I didn't know Nick Bennett, you know, plays for the you know Philadelphia Eagles. You know, <laughs> right. he's got this great career. He's just, it's just never a weapon that they use. The the other thing about that game that I thought was you know huge was the second defensive series. You know, after they scored right away, and you're thinking, mm-hmm. oh shit, here we go, right? This is just going to be one of those games potentially where it's back and forth, you know, they stopped them and went three and out and then yes. we scored right away again. I thought that kind of just completely changed the tenor, uh, you know, and they had some, some lapses later on and, you know, a couple of other big plays, but um, you know, I think that defensive series was huge. And right. at that point, you know, the concern meter, which might've been spiking a little bit up to maybe a four <laughs> or five at that point, you know, went clearly back to a zero or a one. Yeah, well, I tell you, they had a tough assignment uh, trying to stop that Daquan Finn. I, I, I mentioned this in in the in the post game pod on Sunday. I was really impressed with him. He looked like a a minute a mini Michael Vick, and even wore the same yeah. number as Vick. He was, you know, great athlete, very elusive, tough cover for Ohio State. Jim Knowles said today in the or earlier this week in his press conference that he didn't feel Ohio State did the best job that they could have defending. Uh, Finn and he said that's on me. No. We could have done a better job, but it's really tough to simulate in practice that kind of athleticism. Chad, let me kick this over to you. What did you see either on the offensive side or defensive side that that stood out to you? Well, I can tell you what. Uh, one thing that really kind of like stood out to me was a uh, true freshman Dallas Hayden. I mean, come on, he was like, good. That guy's not he. He is quick, man. He's got a little burst in that. Show. Yeah. Speed there, and you know what? Uh, he looked good. Yeah, um, he was hitting the holes. Like he, he's got that, you know, that little turbo button he pushes, and <laughs> you know, like it's crazy because like if you look at him side with you know with Mayan and and uh, Trey Trey, like he, he's not that big. I mean, you get that kid one more year with Mariota and like what his body let it develop a little bit more. That kid's gonna be special. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. That that definitely impressed me. I mean. 108 yards on seven, 108 yards and 17 carries from, from Dallin Hayden in that game. Plus a touchdown. He had a 45 yard run. Sorry, CP. Just wanted to throw those stats in there. Oh, no, no. That's awesome. Like, I love that. I knew he had gotten uh, north of the uh, the hundred yard mark, which is fantastic. Um, First Ohio state back to do it this year, which is funny. (laughs) Who who knew it was going to be Dallin Hayden. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, look at the, and, and prior, I mean, you know, it's a shame that he got hurt, but uh, I mean, that kid's talented to too. He's going to be back next year. Such as it's crazy. Yeah. And just like with the receivers and Harrison's just going to keep getting better. And he better. was great. And that's, and I'll tell you what, like, and one, one guy that, I mean, there was, there's a reason that, you know, he was the number one receiver in, in front of like in Jigba, you know, I mean, obviously he's been pegged with injuries, but Julian filming's a baller, you know, I mean, you can't deny it. He's the kid can play ball. I mean, he can catch the football um you know it's good to see him out there contributing two touchdowns and that yeah yep Uh, only 23 yards receiving but he had two of more touchdowns yeah that touchdown in the uh that stroud was rolling out to the right and he kind of thread that in there and he pulled that in i mean pretty much everybody and like the announcer everybody watched was like oh no that's not a catch and you know i mean it was like after they had that right angle. It, 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 you know, it actually was a, a fantastic catch that he brought in the end zone there. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, funny. Uh, C.J. Stroud said earlier this week that that actually that ball was intended for Marvin Harrison, <laughs> who was actually in the back of the end zone, <laughs> and and uh, Fleming just snagged it out of the air, made a beautiful sideline catch. There were three or four of those sideline catches that um, yeah, yeah. that were just spectacular. It, it's unbelievable. Anyway, go ahead, go ahead, C.P. What else? C.J. was dropping dimes, man. Oh, yeah, man. Telling it's, Dimes. Some of those passes he threw to Stover. I mean, like, and and Stover like bringing him down. I mean, that, that's that was some nice, like, that was some good looking shit right there. But yeah, those, people, those balls over those uh, over right over Stover's shoulder, pulling it in, and you know, it's just it's crazy, man. Like the and you, I mean, it's, you can just go down and list that offense. Like Paige alluded to earlier, it's just like how do you like prepare for that? I mean, like if you're a defensive coordinator. You know, on like Sunday, 
you know, but just starting to plan for the Buckeyes. I mean, what the fuck? How, like, what are you like? I mean, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be like just, you know, like 15 Adderalls, like, <laughs> like the next like six days. Like, just what? But I, I don't even know if that's going to like you. I mean, like the receiving core. I mean, like Jukba, you know, I mean, like, oh, it's just crazy, man. It's yeah. fantastic to be a Buckeye right now. And it's just, you know, and like, and that's the one of the beautiful things to take away that I, I get from this is that like, you know, like, I and mean, it, it's evident, like coming in next year, we've got the number two, the uh, number one and number two receiver already committed for next year's class. So, I mean, these guys are seeing that, like, you know, we've got more than, you know, we've got at least three number one receivers, which would be number one on most like, you know, teams in college football and mm-hmm. they're getting the ball. It's not like they're not, you know, getting the ball distributed to them or this and that way. So they're not, you know, you know, worried about that. And that's because they're seeing how our offense can go through. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no. And I could tell Johnny Cash agrees with you, man. Good, good point. Yeah, Johnny, like, hey, Johnny Cash out there. Who knows what he's freaking out about? I don't know. Man. PBH, <laughs> let me kick this back to you. It, 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 any other observations from that, uh, from that performance on Saturday night you want to share? Not from the performance, but I, I do have a concern and it, sure. it hit me. I, I started oh. to think about it. And then it really dawned on me on Monday night. What the hell is up with our field? What is up with that turf? Why is all of the white littered with black? And I know there's black pellets. But then I was watching the Monday night game at Buffalo. And that thing is like the Sistine Chapel. It is gorgeous, <laughs> right? It like literally jumps off the screen. Did I, I'm, I'm legitimately pissed off about that field. It's brand new. It looks like shit already. Because and all I, the black I pellets? <laughs> yeah, go look at it again. Right. Go back in YouTube and look at some of the plays and you'll you'll see it. And you're like, what the hell is going on? One I didn't the, notice the that. Best parts of that, seeing that, like when Harrison got his, the two feet down. Well, that's like why that's there. Is where he got the two feet. And then like, you know, just like, it was like slow motion, that that rooster tail. Click it to the black. That, that, that so was, that's why those there. pellets are there so that you can see when, know, when, when receivers I'm are getting their feet you, down. They, they went on the cheap on this field or something. It, it well, doesn't look They overdid look it on the pellets. I'm pretty pissed off about it. Ah, interesting. Well, you know was, what? <laughs> right. I, mean, I didn't notice right. that when I was there for the opener, but that was the opener against Notre Dame. They hadn't, you know, they yeah. hadn't spent a lot of time that on it. Great. Okay. It now I'm like going to watch had that. that field in place for like three years now. I want some answers from Gene. <laughs> This is unacceptable. Dude, like, totally I, unacceptable. Uh, all totally right. <laughs> well, okay. So right. other than that, other than that, you know, I mean, uh, it was great to see the offense click. And I think the defense, you know, had some lapses. Like I said, I, you know, it's Toledo oh. move on. It, it will be interesting though. I do think you make a good point, Zach. Like that might be the second best team, third best team we play all year, potentially. Right. I mean, we'll see how it plays out, but mm. um you know, they're going to be up there. And, and, um, so, you know, it'll, it'll be be interesting to see how they, the rest of the season goes for them. Um, they're not going to face an athlete, a quarterback like that, probably until probably not. No. Yeah. Probably not until Michigan. I mean, he, he was a, he's a unique athlete with his, with his playmaking ability. Uh, Finn, he's got, he's got wheels, man. Yeah. How about you, CP? Anything else you want to share from last Saturday's performance before we move to Wisconsin? One thing that I, that I will say about the defense and like something, I mean, right now our best defensive player was not on the field. So I mean, you know, exactly. Which is they say it's it's looking good that he'll be back for Saturday night from everything I'm I'm hearing and reading. But uh, I mean, you got to take that into account. I mean, the kid, you got to give the kid some props, man. That kid's got wheels and this is making some moves, but I did some of those like, there were so many times like that, like we had like tackles that were like, you know, you're like, Oh God, we're gonna, this is going to be a loss for 12, 15 yards. And like, you know, like I feel like they just got away and, and it wasn't, there was a couple of times it just not even wasn't thin. You know what I mean? It was like, come on, let's, let's, let's get, I love seeing that pressure. Cause like, what have we seen that? You know what I mean? Pressure was, <laughs> pressure was great. And uh, you know, yeah. I think there's, there's good reason to, to trust that uh, you apply that same pressure to, you know, the rest of Ohio State's opponents, you're going it, to, it's going to result in, ta- in sacks, turnovers, tackles for loss, that sort of thing. Just Finn has exactly. a unique escape ability, a unique skill set that they're just not going to see the rest of the regular season. The, the, I, I just don't think they will. Zach. Yeah. And one thing that like, again, like this Saturday night, and I know we're going to get to that in a minute, but I just wanted to like make this real quick. 
the quarterback uh, for Wisconsin, I think his name's is it Graham? Maybe something. I don't know. Graham Mertz. Fuck his name. Graham yeah, Mertz. Graham Mertz. Mm-hmm. He's got negative five yards rushing on the season. He's a passing quarterback. <laughs> it's a statue so back there. I think for there's sure, going to yeah. be some sacks next week, this Saturday night. <laughs> mm, yeah. The blackout. Can, can we get some action on that? The over under at Buckeye sacks, oh, like five. Oh yeah, that, I think that would be a good bet. All right, I like that. Bet. All right. Well, hey, look, it sounds like we're ready to move on to Wisconsin. Um, Okay, great. So let's turn our attention to this coming Saturday night. The Wisconsin Badgers visit the Horseshoe for Ohio State's third night game of the season. PVH, you have to be ecstatic about that. Awesome. Three out of the first four at night. You love it. The game is a 7.30 p.m. Eastern kick on ABC. The line is Ohio State minus 18 and a half. The over-under is 57. The Badgers come into this matchup at two and one with blowout wins over Illinois State and New Mexico State, but also with a surprising 17 of 14 home loss to Washington State in Madison. This is back on September 10th. Uh, By the way, I think as you guys have already mentioned, the Buckeyes will be wearing their all black uniforms for this one. Last time they wore those was Michigan State in 2019. That was Michigan State in the shoe in 2019. Those well, helmets are legit. Yeah, yeah, they are. I'm not sure how I feel, but I I think I like them. I know the kids love them. Um, I don't know, PVH. What do you think about the all black unis? Uh, I'm down. I like them. I yeah. like them a lot. Yeah, they're and, solid. Know, I mean, I thought, yeah, I I think for like a night game against Wisconsin, it's perfect. Maybe not so much like the traditional like against Michigan on Thanksgiving, but sure, why not on a right. night game? Absolutely. Yeah, in 2018, they, pretty slick. in 2018, they wore them in an afternoon game against Nebraska and it just didn't have the same juice for me. Uh, how about you, CP? You like the black unis? You know, and I dig it. And, you know, there's a very like impressive list of recruits coming into the shoe on yeah. Saturday night from all over the country, like some big, big time players. And, you know, they're doing the whole blackout in the shoe. So, I mean, I think Great it's like for recruits, they, yeah. those kids are like, oh, man, this is insane. Juiced. We're calling 105,000 people. And like, it's just a black. Everybody's wearing black. The uniforms are black. <laughs> shit's like, like just crazy. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, it I, it I should I be a great it. environment. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 you know, to Paige's point, the field's going to look black, too, thanks to all those pellets. <laughs> so it's going to be a true blackout all the way around. So <laughs> Ohio State leads oh, the all-time my. series between these two schools, 61 to 18 with five ties. It's it's remarkable that the that the series is that lopsided. Uh, you know, I get when Barry Alvarez came into the picture and over the last 25, 30 years, Wisconsin has kind of sort of been able to even it out a little bit, but pre- still a pretty lopsided advantage for Ohio State in the all-time series. And the Buckeyes have won the last eight in a row. The last time these programs met was in 2019, a season in which they played twice, as we all remember. The Buckeyes won both games. 38-7 during the regular season. That was the big Chase Young game, right? Where I think he had like a bajillion sacks and they just could not stop him. That was really when Chase Young's kind of Heisman campaign yeah. started. And then the 34-21 comeback win in the Big Ten Championship game. The last time Wisconsin beat Ohio State was in 2010. The last time the Badgers beat Ohio State in the, beat Ohio State in the horseshoe was 2004. So it's been quite a while. Now, the 2022 edition of the Badgers look very much like many of its predecessors, dating back to the Barry Alvarez era, right? They have a bruising tailback in Braylon Allen, who ran for more than 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns last season. Allen is averaging 6.6 yards per carry this season and already has five rushing touchdowns. And of course, they have a good defense led by defensive coordinator Jim Leonard that currently ranks 11th nationally in total defense. 25th in defensive yards per play. They're 13th nationally against the run and 19th against the pass. So they do everything pretty well. This Wisconsin defense, no surprise there. Finally, CP, you mentioned him earlier. Graham Mertz is their game manager incarnate at quarterback. Through three games, Mertz is completing 71% of his passes. He's thrown six touchdowns to two INTs. To me, boys, this doesn't look like peak Wisconsin. I mean, they look solid and they'll likely be in the thick of the Big Ten West race this season, but I, I'm, I'm not sure they're as good along the offensive line as they typically are or as stout defensively as they've been in the past. I mean, I just mentioned those stats, impressive defensive stats, but they're usually up in that top five, top you know, 10 uh, echelon defensively. Also, I'm not sure Braylon Allen is, is quite as good is the likes of Jonathan Taylor or Melvin Gordon. To me, Allen seems maybe just a notch below their caliber. And they certainly don't appear to have any real threats 
on the outside at receiver to really worry about. The last time we played them, they had Quintez Cephas. We remember PVH. Cephas killed us in that Big Ten title game. He was yeah. having his way there for like three quarters. They don't seem to have anybody like that on the outside, though, this season. So, PVH, I'm going to kick this back to you. What about this matchup with Wisconsin Saturday night really piques your interest? Yeah, see, you do this to me because I was actually <laughs> – you reversed my thinking on this, but I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm actually mildly concerned about this game. Um, uh, I mean, I think we'll win. I think we'll cover, but I think, you know, it's just outside of the big 10 championship, what in 2014, one other time, maybe, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's just, they always give us a game. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, you just spouted all that stuff out. And then I thought, yeah, they'll probably blow them out. But, I, you know, I'm going to stick to my initial instinct here. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll be ready for the game. I just looked at Washington State. You know, they're 3-0. and um, But, man, yeah, that's a bad loss to start off the season at home. Um, so, but, you know, good Wisconsin the teams. Is- the, you know, the thing about that, though, is there have been very good Wisconsin teams that have gone on to win the Big Ten that have inexplicable – non-conference losses but then they get their shit together during conference play and they get rolling so just to your point like you know they play us tough and maybe washington yeah. state would turn out to be one of these inexplicable like blips uh in an yeah. otherwise really good season for wisconsin sorry go ahead pbh yeah and i think just the main i mean i think it's gonna be really hard for them to you know keep pace with us right. um so the defense is probably going to have their way. I think the key here is, okay, let's offense, right? You kind of got back on track. Let's see you keep it rolling against clearly, you know, a a better defense probably even than what Toledo had. And I think that'll be, that'll be key, right? Can Mm -hmm. we keep this momentum going and the offense keeps moving, you know, in the right direction. And then, you know, I will probably get to it, but um, you know, the run game and Mm -hmm. Travion, you know, um, you know, it's kind of tough if the guy doesn't play, right, to be this great yeah. back that you guys both think he is. He doesn't play that much. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God, I, dude. Yeah. Hey, yeah. man, I'm sorry, your boy Trey Trey, you know. Oh, dude, look at the first half. He looked like the one of the top three first backs. Half. The first Hunt, series. Bro. I mean, he, he didn't play after series, the first dude. series. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah. He got dude, hurt. I, come on, Zach. He's a beast. Uh, oh, no. Ion is nowhere close to what the back Trayvon is. I, I, I'm no not going to deny the talent. I'm with you, CP. I think he's still their most talented, most explosive back. But to Paige's point, the durability is starting to creep in for me as as a as a concern. Paige, I want to back you up on, on your point about how competitive Wisconsin typically plays us. Of course, the, the last time we played them was in the Big Ten Championship game. We were losing that game 21-7 to yeah. at the half. Yeah. And we blew them out in Columbus yeah. earlier that, that, uh, that season, 38-7. But then if we go back, uh, 2017, we play him in the Big Ten Championship game. That's a six-point Ohio State win, 27-21. We played him in 2016 at their place. We beat him in overtime, 30-23. to The next matchup before that was the 2014 Big Ten Championship game. That was a total outlier. That was the 59 to nothing blowout win. Total outlier for this series between these two schools. Before that, 2013, 31-24 Ohio State. That was a night game. I remember that one in the shoe. Very competitive. The year before that, 2012, we beat them at their place in Madison, 21-14. Very, very tightly contested game that went well into the fourth quarter. And then 2011, that was the Luke Fickle season. We beat them, you know, Braxton Miller with the miracle throw to Devin Smith to win that game 33-29. And that's just the last, what is it? You know, last 11 years between these two schools. A lot of very close games. More often than not, Wisconsin is going to battle us, play us very close. All right, CP, I'm going to kick this to you. What are you going to be looking for? What are you going to be watching in this game? You know what, man? I like I, I I know the history and like listening to you guys of going back and like you know the last few years. I that this is going to be a blowout. I'm going to stick with the way I always roll, but this is going to be a blowout. It's not going to be close, <laughs> wow. and it it's going to be at least a three touchdown victory. All right. Well, I mean, we're going to get your score prediction. So what what are you going to? Yeah. So the line is Ohio State eighteen and a half. But what are you going to be watching specifically? Something on I'm, offense, defense. You're going to be look, you're going to be paying close attention to in this matchup. I'm going to be watching like we're, this is our first Big Ten matchup, so mm-hmm. Big Ten opener. You know, I want to see how in sync our offensive line is. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's good. You know, I, I 
I want to see how they're they're grooving, they're gelling um, out of the gate here. I want to see. Uh, I mean, really, not much. Like, what, what else can you say about the offense? I mean, I, I'd like mm-hmm. to see you know defense. I'd like to see no blown plays. Mm-hmm. You know, now Noel's dead say, and I, and I and I like this. Like, you know, there's we don't want to as a team. We don't want to give up more than five plays of twenty yards or more. I like that. Okay, he goes. He goes. They're, they're going to happen. But five is is the max, you know. So I don't want to see any of that. Like like no more than five. Um, I want to see our safety position. I mean, like Burke. I mean, knows like I read like knows is still like not down on the kid yet. You know. Oh, you I mean, mean like, corner like, cornerback? Yeah, Burke at corner. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm, I'm like, I know Burke's a safety, like, like uh, back, but I'm talking about our safeties. Our safety play needs to like improve drastically. Interesting. Burke, okay. And then like, like he had a great, uh, you know, great season last year where like, you know, we were all like, oh my God, this kid is legit. Right. You know, he's gotten, you know, he's had some blown plays this year. Yeah. Um, Knowles is not down on him yet. He said he's a hard, like, you know, he's one of the first kids in there early busting his ass. He knows, you know, hones his craft. Right. So I want to see him get back in the game, you know. So interesting, interesting thing I, on Burke, real quick, but sorry to interrupt you, yeah. CP, but no, man, uh, no, the, yeah. the Cleveland.com crew was reporting today that Burke did not practice. And really? uh, it's unclear why he did not practice. But, um, you know, oh, they're not very deep at that position. It, it, he has right. had a rough go. He's in a bit of a sophomore slump. I agree with you. But they're, they're in a lot of options behind Burke. So that'll be something to watch going into this game. Hopefully it was some other reason that he did not yeah, practice. Wednesday, no practice on Wednesday is not, like, not good. usually a good indication. Like yeah. rolling into Thursday, That's something to yeah. watch. Yeah. Sorry, CP. Go ahead. What no, else are you going to be looking for? Good, I'd like to see, uh, you know, the linebackers. Like, I mean, you know. Now, somebody else besides Tommy, you know, I mean, well, he never leaves the field the nice- <laughs> and they only play yeah. with two linebackers. I don't know who else you, you would put in there. Right. He's, he's played great. I think Tommy Eichenberg, and oh, this is definitely a played, Tommy no, Eichenberg game against Wisconsin, right? Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, he, <laughs> like he's legit, but I mean, like, like, you know what I mean? This, I'd like to These see are like the, the Zach Boren games, right? We're like Zach. Or, or, yeah. Yep. His name tough, tough Borland. Right. Yeah. It's, like, yeah, yeah. it's tailor made for him. Right. Yeah. Well, Zach Bourne and Tough Borland both played middle linebacker on high state. So either one PVH is an appropriate yeah. analogy, I think. <laughs> so, but, but, but he, uh, yeah. CP, you do want to see this is a, I agree with you. This is a big game for the Ohio State linebackers for sure. I mean, yeah. Going against that Wisconsin there's, running there's, game. There's talk that, you know, JK might, uh, Adapt, like you move away a little bit from his four two, you know, and go to a little four three at some point. Um, he's like, you know, I'm not. This is my defense, but like, you know, I can adapt. And like he said, like, you know, when he was younger, coach, you're like, no, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not making adjustments. But he, like, he says, I, you know, I'm not against doing going looking into doing the four three at some point mm-hmm. throughout this game against Wisconsin, changing it up a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, it just, I feel like our defensive backs, like how many passes, like, I mean, like, I just, I feel like, but we need to like tighten that shit up a little bit. Yeah, I agree with um, you. I, 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 do, I disagree though, that it's the safeties. I think the safeties have actually played really, really well. And it's one well, of the Hickman's strengths been, of that defense. I, I, right. Yeah, no, I, I, I like it's the corners well. that are the weakness and Burke is a cornerback and he, he has had a rough kind of a sophomore slump. I, I agree with you there. And uh, I thought before Cam Brown got beat for the long touchdown, uh, you know, on the opening drive against Toledo last week, that he's actually played well. And then Brown got a little nicked up. But I, I think the corners are definitely the big question mark on on the defensive side of the ball for sure. And I mean, right. I said that in, in the in the post game pod on on Sunday that I'm starting to get a little concerned about that. It's interesting I mean, you mentioned Hicks Jim being Knowles. Hurt really kills us. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's, we'll see. Jordan Hancock, I should say. Yeah, Hancock being out is is, uh, and we don't know when he's going to return. There's an injury. There's that. That's a point I want to make later here in the pod because Ohio Hancock. State has been a little nicked up. A lot of guys missed action on Saturday and and uh, day said you know out of an abundance of caution most of them were held out but it's something to pay attention to um I I'm with you CP I want to see if Jim Knowles is really going to play with three safeties in this game against this opponent or if he's going to be forced to use a third linebacker at some point maybe he will and I'm also really really hopeful that Mike Hall Jr. is healthy enough to play CP I think you might have mentioned that as well Buckets are yeah. absolutely going to need Hall's playmaking in the middle of that defensive line for this opponent especially and then on offense uh, yeah how much is Travion Henderson 
going to contribute in this game. PBH, you made a reference to that. His durability, for me personally, is starting to become a concern. Jackson Smith and Jigba, another one. How much is he going to be able to contribute? So far, Ohio State has not really needed either of them to win football games. But against a quality defense in Wisconsin, Ryan Day might really need their playmaking on Saturday night. So that's something I'm going to be I'm going to be paying close attention to. And then I mentioned it, the the the, the injury bug. I mean, it seems to be running through this roster right now at a pretty good clip. Mike Hall Jr., Travion Henderson, Smith and Jigba, Josh Proctor, Tanner McAllister, Cam Brown had to leave the game last last week. I think in the second quarter or the third quarter, he did not return. Ryan Day said, again, most of these players were left out or held out because uh, out of an abundance of caution. But it, it, isn't it kind of hard to take him at his word, given how secretive they are about injuries and how you know guys show up on the report uh, that don't show up on the injury report end up uh, you know not playing and that was the case with both uh, Proctor and McAllister they were both not listed as unavailable and then they were both late scratches so I really hope these are all minor bumps and bruises and not long-term injuries is my point because it's starting to worry me a little bit I mean those are some big names on that list that I just that I just mentioned PVH how about you you're gonna yeah no you're gonna need all those guys yeah yeah for for sure sure. it's uh it's frustrating they don't really give you any details but it's just the nature of the game today there's and i don't even really know why right like is, is it could have materially changed the way wisconsin game plans for us i doubt i don't know it, why right? they do we're it gonna, yeah you know it's like oh well burke's not playing okay well we're gonna pass the ball 90 times well, that's not who wisconsin is wisconsin <laughs> is gonna be who they are they're gonna try and run the ball down your throat right. it is always fun to watch them play uh, on offense and just how awesome their offensive line is. Like, yeah. you know, they're just, they're, they're like synchronized swimmers out there. I mean, it's just very <laughs> choreographed. It's actually a beautiful thing to watch, right? right. They're just going to try and do ball control, probably take a page out of Notre Dame's, you know, playbook. Yeah. You know, do ball possession, long drives. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're going to need more than that. I think to beat this team, I just can't, I can't imagine them being able to shut us down offensively. And so how are they going to score enough points, you know, to, to legitimately win this game? I just don't see it. Yeah. All right. So but let's... I, they're going to hang, right? I do. I mean, it's, it's my, I'm mildly concerned. So you're mildly concerned. Blow up. All right. Let's fire up the concernometer. What's your concernometer score for this PBH? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna go with a five. I'm gonna a go five. five. Loves the concernometer. The concernometer. That shit up, Zach. Fire it up. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So, PBH, that is one of the higher concernometer readouts we've gotten from you, my friend. Five. You've already kind of qualified it. You've explained why why you're concerned. But go ahead. The floor is yours. No, I mean, I, I and part of me is probably just history, right? Mm-hmm. They they just play us tough, and they're a good team. They got good players. If they can, you know, get some stops on defense, control the ball, then you know it, it could be a pretty tight game in yeah. the third quarter very easily. Well, if we have ninety some odd yards and penalties again, um, and make mental mistakes, they're certainly good enough to take advantage of that. I agree with you. How about you, CP? What's your uh, concern? Well, and that's the, the Sorry, go ahead. Not to, sorry to jump in. The, the other thing that was great, actually, going back to the Toledo game, were a couple um, interceptions, right? Which yeah, you know, finally, like, uh, finally, mm-hmm. right? And ha- have we actually had a turnover on offense yet? I don't think we have. We have not yet. We uh, uh, Stroud oh, had one that was dropped. He had an interception that was probably dropped early in the game against Toledo. Should have been picked, but outside yeah. of that, no, we have not turned it over. No interceptions. Yeah. No fumbles that I'm aware. Yeah. Although, no, sorry, was there a don't be superstitious? <laughs> was there late in the game against Arkansas State, there was a ball that caromed on a punt that caromed off. Ohio State was you know, receiving the punt and it caromed off an Ohio State player and Arkansas State fell on it. It was a cheap, irrelevant turnover. When mm-hmm. the game's been on the line, when the outcome has been in doubt, no, Ohio State has not turned the ball over. To your yeah. point. So okay. I'd like to see the defense, you know, get a get a few more turnovers. That would be awesome as well. Yeah, I would I would too. Yeah, Ronnie Hickman had a really nice pick to start the third quarter and that really buried. I mean, that completely put put to rest any notion that the Toledo might come back and make it a game. All right, CP, how about you? Concernometer score, my friend. Um, concernometer. Um, I'm gonna like uh, go to about uh, one and a half. Okay, one and a half. You know, it kind of sounds stupid when I'm like, oh, 
you know, half, like whatever. I'm like, I guess I'll go one and a half. Like, <laughs> okay. like that's about as far as I'm going to go. Now I know we're going to go score predictions like after this Z, but when we, sure. can we I, I want to start something new on the pod just for All right. age. Okay. All right. Let's I do it. Do, like weekly. I just want to like one thing with Travion, like, you know, like for, you know, for just, we'll, we'll go get, get that to that later. Um, we'll okay. get to the score prediction and wrap it up. But I just want to do one week with Travion, like what, what, you know, preseason all american that kind of thing go from there okay. all right so so with Travion, you you want to each week we're going to talk about Travion henderson we're going to make a, a prediction for him or yeah. okay yeah like something what, along those lines like accolades like what are, like you know over under on yards like them being you know I mean, okay like, that's that's all i like, love it just, just one page to realize like what he's actually saying. <laughs> well I, it is i mean up until this i mean i've been right all year so i've got three games of <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> solid evidence in my corner, and you just think because he's a five star recruit out of Maryland, that it has the next nothing to do. Elliot, that. and I got news for you, buddy. He's not, he's just no, not. Oh boy, and first of all, he's not out of Maryland. Let's get your shoes, Virginia. Right? Right? Yeah, <laughs> but. The- Okay, I, I, let's do that. We'll do that. All right, so I'm going to go with my concern on me to read out five and a half page. I'm not that far off of yours. Wisconsin, though they are currently not ranked, and they did lose to Washington State at home. I have a sneaking suspicion that they're still probably a top 25 caliber team. Their defense seems to be good enough to keep them in this game for a while. I agree with you, PBH. They're good enough to make Ohio State pay for penalties and mental mistakes. So Ohio State has to be really on point in that regard. But like you, PBH, I just don't know if they have enough in the passing game to stay with Ohio State for four quarters. Okay, why don't we go to score predictions? Chad, it sounds to me like you're just itching to get your score prediction out. Why don't we start not, with you? I, I mean, I, 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 okay, so like I want to say two things of why I'm a concern meter of one and a half. Okay. okay. Quarterback, negative five yards rushing this year. Hmm. Okay. Wisconsin offensive line, not what it's been in the past. That's a good three, point. Four years. I've heard that as well. Okay. Um, it's a blackout in the shoe, um, all black uniforms. Um, big time recruits there. There's a lot of black, uh, what page, what, what, what did you reference those? Right. Like the, 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 the turf, confetti. like the, yeah, the confetti. So there's going to be like, there's going to be black everywhere. So that's one of the reasons I get my one and a half. So my score prediction, having said that is going to be 56, 17. Wow. 56, 17. All right. PBH. How about you? Give us a score prediction. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> how many how many uh, how many uh touchdowns for trey trey um i'm gonna put like train's gonna have like he's gonna be north of 100 and uh 110 yards and he'll have one touchdown at least hmm. okay all right all right make a note of that uh <laughs> i'm gonna go i'm gonna go 42 to 22 I'm actually even going to call my first safety of the year for this game because I think Wisconsin <laughs> might, might be doing some punting. So I'm going to throw a safety in there, two touchdowns, two field goals, one safety. Um, Love it. But yeah, relatively, you know, a close game for the Buckeyes, 42 to 22. Okay. I've got Ohio State 38, Wisconsin 17. Might be a good chess match between Ryan Day and Jim Leonard for a half. But C.J. Stroud... And those receivers are just too good, too much. They're the difference. Wisconsin doesn't have anything that can match that firepower. So I think Ohio State pulls away in the second half for a 38-17 win. And, uh, you know, onward and upward to All Rutgers, right. to the, the mighty Scarlet Knights after that. Hmm. So I, I want to circle back. To Travion Henderson, because clearly I think we're all a little split, a little divided on Henderson. Uh, Chad, you're calling over, north of 100, uh, 100 yards, 110 yards. 110 say, yards. 110 yeah. yards, two touchdowns? Uh, you know what? One touchdown. I'm, I'm going to go, you know what, Paige, just because I you know, I love you, but like I just think this is a subject that like we just don't agree on. I'm going two touchdowns. All north right. North of 110, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns is a pretty are we, stout. Are we putting a little action on this? Hey, bro, like we can talk off air, man. <laughs> okay. And then PVH, all right. What are you seeing? What are you, what are you expecting out of Travion Henderson in this game? He left after I, the first series against Toledo. He's a little nicked up. He has an injury history. Uh, what are you expecting in this game from him? And, and that was kind of weird, right? Like he scored the touchdown, you know, he, he wasn't on the field or, you know, 
he, he got up and ran to the sideline. And next thing you know, that was it. He was yeah. done. It was what, just kind of strange. How the hell did that happen? I'm with you. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't see anything that would indicate at any point on the drive or in the touchdown celebration that would indicate that he was injured. Yeah. See, how so, many yards did he have against Wisconsin or uh, Toledo? Uh, he had just the one series. I think it was 19 was yards on four series. carries. Yeah, he, he was, was good. He was great in that series. Yeah, yeah, he was good. He gave him some good tough – you know, I mentioned this on the postgame pod. I thought he 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 gave some 19 tough yards. I thought actually Toledo – it was really the only time in the whole game that Toledo put up any real resistance. And they made him earn those 19 yards. I don't know if you remember, there was a third down conversion that he, he got where it was not blocked very well. And he was stonewalled in the backfield, but – he bounced off the, you know, the back of his offensive line and found another hole to to convert the first down. And I thought also the touchdown run was well blocked. He ran, you know, between his tackles. He was very patient, found his way to the end zone. But at some point he got hurt. And uh I don't know how. I didn't see it. So PVH, what are you expecting out of out of Henderson in this game? Well, I'm gonna have action with Chad on this. So I'm gonna be kind of rooting against him. This is gonna be fun. Um <laughs> no, I just just play, man. Just be healthy, right? And right. you know, I, I think he's a weapon. We've talked about it before. Right. You can use him in the screen game, wheel routes, stuff like that. He's I'm not saying the guy is not talented as hell. I just think we haven't quite seen it yet. And I'd be super excited to lose that. I mean, this season we haven't had. seen it this yet. You're talking about this season, correct? Because we, we saw last season. Yeah, you saw flashes of it. You saw flashes of it. But, I, you know, I mean, come on, you can't. Anyways, we don't have to get into the nitty gritty of how great Trey or Trey really is. not I would just like to see him do more. And, mm-hmm. you know, so far this season, it's been a disappointment. To say otherwise is is ridiculous. He hasn't, he's barely even played. We don't even need to see him do anymore. Yeah, dude. Like, we're, we're like, let's get like the middle of the season. Now. It's if come. You're all about if come. You're all about potential. I'm about You're damn right playing. I am because like I'm <laughs> Arkansas State and, and Toledo, dude. I'm going to like Travion Henderson is going to take us to the promised land way over like Miami. When we get into the meat of the schedule and to the college football playoffs, so let's just not even go there. I said well, the, we will go there. I said in the post game pod that Ohio State is going to need Travion Henderson's playmaking to get to where they want to go. At some point, they're going to need him. I, I just I don't think Mayan Williams has the explosive playmaking ability that that Henderson does. He just doesn't. And Dallin Hayden is a true freshman and he looked great yeah, in, in garbage time back, against man. Toledo. Yeah. He looks good. He looks good. And out, may, maybe he so. can give them a little something as the season goes along. I, I really hope they're not going to have to lean on him too much as a true freshman. It'd be a bad sign if they did. But uh, I am starting to get concerned about Travion Henderson's durability. And I think there's good reason to be concerned about it. He re- really wasn't able to finish out the season last year as we had all hoped, I think even Travion Henderson would tell you that. And I think even Travion Henderson would tell you, looking at his game log this season, four carries, 19 yards against no, against uh, Toledo last Saturday. He had 10 for right. 87 against Arkansas State, 15 for 91 against Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, just it has been a little disappointing. Those first two games, I don't think it was his fault. I, I think he was underutilized. But... Uh, maybe there was good reason they were limiting his touches uh, after what happened against Toledo, right? Because they're trying to keep yeah. him fresh and extend his season as far as as far as it it can go. So uh, I, I mean, last year, like as a freshman, he like was the second like leading back in like Ohio State history, like in that season. He, he, he was really good, forty eight yards. Yeah, I, I'm not denying that. I I, I think he's very talented, he's explosive, but maybe page, not using. Maybe uh, trying to use him in between the tackles as much as they are is a mistake. Maybe the idea is to get him out in space. I said this a couple of weeks ago. Maybe we start thinking about Travis Etienne and how Clemson used him. Get him out in space, use him more in the passing game and not rely so much on him in between the tackles because it might be tough for him to make it through a full 12 game regular season running between the tackles. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm just hoping he can play four quarters and he can be a factor in this game and he's not heading off to the locker room after the first series in the first quarter. Pryor was supposed to be helping us with that too. And it's just a shame. Would have helped. Yeah, dude. You know what, Chad? I just, you know, I've got my Belpre Daily Beast, you know, ticker. BDB? (laughs) Yeah, the BDB. Yes. You know what? They just broke some news that, you know, there's so much concern around Trey Trey that they're thinking of moving Steel Chambers back to running back. back. 
<laughs> well, at this stage, <laughs> Daily Beast is breaking stories. I think at this stage, it would baby. it would probably be Chip Trainum. They would move from linebacker uh, back to yeah. back to running back, and hopefully, okay. it doesn't come to that. But uh, you know, Paige, also to your point. <laughs> Mayan Williams, it's it's you know a really good thing. Ohio State has them in in their yeah. back pocket, right? Ten for seventy seven. That kid too, man. Against Toledo, eight for forty six against Arkansas State, fourteen for eighty four in the big drive, as we remember against Notre Dame to salt away the clock and put the game, you know, out of reach, uh, you know, against the Irish. So, um, it's it's good to have a, a pair and a spare, as they say. And I did like what I saw out of Dallin Hayden. I just. I'm reluctant to put too much faith in a true freshman, especially when his only action has really been at garbage time. All right, boys. Well, listen, uh, I thought that was a really good effort for Wednesday night. If neither of you has anything else you want to share about the Wisconsin game, why don't we wrap things up? And I will see you guys, I guess, at this time next week to look at Rutgers. been listening to the south stands a buckeye football podcast you can follow us on twitter instagram and facebook and visit our website at southstandsosu.com